Hello again, Gooners. I hope uh, you got the whole hello this time. This is number 39. I'm not very good with these numbers, am I? Number 39 of the Loose Cannon. Hope uh, you're enjoying the show so far and uh, you know where to leave your comments. I normally say that at the end, but I thought, hey, I'm going to say it at the beginning for a change. That's the agenda. That was a very quick look, wasn't it? Um, I'm sure you don't want to know the details. Okay, you do. I'm going to tell you then. First of all, Rowan Van Persie, still the number one story going around. I wonder why, because it's turned into a saga. Yes, we know all about that. I'll talk more on that in just a while. Also, going to talk about potential signings. So, a lot of transfer news, or is it a bit of transfer news? Or is it just a smattering of transfer news? I'll let you decide. I will suggest nothing at this stage. Um, players we've been linked with, that connects obviously uh gary neville's had an interesting comment um perhaps it went under the radar but i noticed it so i'm going to let you know all about that is talking about our our prospects of winning the title quite interesting won't go on that long unlike me and uh what else can i tell you um kwame ampadu ampadu i mean he's back at the club um well i'm gonna make a few comments on that probably not a lot and of course we've got the boreham wood game coming up not that anyone's very excited about that, aside from me. So, somebody's got to be excited about those things. And also, coming up at the very end, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my Jack and Ori bit and, and read a bit of that to you. Because it's relevant. Honestly, it is. I always find a way of making it relevant. I mean, that's why I didn't bother doing a, doing a vlog, vidcast, vodcast yesterday. Because I was thinking, how can I make something relevant? And I, quite honestly, the sort of news that was going on yesterday, it just bored me to tears. And I just thought, when, well, we know that we've got to wait for the season to start, but I just can't, I can't wait. I, I get kind of like a kid at this time of year, more than more than any other time of the year. People say I'm a kid anyway, but that's another story entirely. But I tell you what, is a story that is kind of boring the um, the let's say the dangly bits off us is uh, the whole Robin Van Persie saga. Um, the latest news came it's not quite the latest news but some of the latest news came from boris becker on his twitter account now read into that what you will i would say there's uh well we normally like to say there's no smoke without fire but in this case uh, i think i think boris is just looking at adding followers because where's he where's he getting this information from i think he has got some connection with a with a german club by munich so perhaps by munich put a bid in for Romy van percy but anyway just to cut the long story boring Boris has actually said that Robin Van Persie uh, is staying put at Arsenal. Suggestions that he signed a two-year deal. No proof of that yet. Of course, the club would rush out a statement on, on that very subject if, if he had indeed signed on the dotted line. So I very much doubt it. Meanwhile, we're hearing stories that uh, Sir Alex Ferguson... Uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, sorry about things falling around. It's a bit like a BBC studio in here. You know, the state of it. Um, anyway... <laughs> Sir Alex reckons that um, it's a done deal, um, or a done deal. It's a done deal. He's going to get Romy Van Persie. He's going to become the new Frank State uh, Staple Stapleton. Of course, back in the seventies, anyone with long memories will remember that Frank Stapleton joined Manchester United from Arsenal. A bit more on that later in uh, Steve Stammer's book. I'll we'll read an extract so so we can sort of go back to history and see what was learnt or not learnt by this great club of ours. Anyway, Robin Van Persie, will he join Manchester United? There's talk of a £20 million transfer fee, done and dusted. Uh, looks like they can actually meet um, his um, his wages, his, his wage demands, which are £130,000 a week, apparently, which is why we're hearing Juventus have now dropped out of the running, despite being front runners for such a long time. Manchester United appear to be in the in pole position now, in the driving seat. Um, without a steering wheel and looks like anyway according to these reports that's the most likely destination for Robin Van Persie obviously Dimitar Berbatov unhappy he wants to move they will need to replace him so will Robin Van Persie be that guy to replace Berbatov mm, possibly I think I think there may be something in this story unfortunately I hate to admit it but I think he's more likely to move to Manchester United than Manchester City and why because Sir Alex is a good manager he's proved proven it season after season okay didn't win anything last year neither did our boss let's not go there but Sir Alex Sir Alex is the kind of guy that people respect um Roberto Mancini 
possibly one day he'll get the same level of respect but I doubt it because very few managers achieve that level of respect in uh, a short space of time Jose Mourinho possibly another that that has got the respect of his players on, at the same level in a different way though in a different way he's one of the boys whereas Sir Alex certainly lets you know who's boss but I can see Robin considering going to United looks like he's going to have to leave unfortunately it really seems that way uh, there's been a question put about that can we replace Robin Van Persie well my answer to this is even if Robin Van Persie stays can he reproduce the form that he showed us last season my answer to that is no I don't think so because I think he peaked last season I don't think we'll ever see a better season from Robin Van Persie than we did in the last campaign therefore makes sense to sell I don't want him to leave but from a business point of view we would be better off selling unfortunately and this brings me nicely on to stories of signings one website running a story that five signings it said five signings something like that it was one of the top stories on the internet yesterday and today as well these five signings I kid you not are the following one Lucas Podolski no disagreement there two Olivier Giroud no disagreement there three Mbai Niang from Khan. Apparently our bid is too low for the teenager. Uh, so at this stage, he doesn't look like he's definitely going to be number three, although we would have to be the favourites to land, this, to land the, uh, the player. Looks like we've got a good chance. Then, so those three I can just about accept. Number four, Jack Wilshire. Hello. I think he's been playing for us for a while. I know he's not flying out with the squad, but, uh, and he's been cropped all pretty much all last season. So he might seem like a new signing, but re in reality, he's not. He's not even put pen to paper on a new deal, has he, uh, that recently? And then number five is the Ox. Now, you know, I think I think this is really pushing pushing it, putting these down as five new signings. And then and then the article goes on to list uh, Rio, uh, Rio, uh, Miaichi, to give him his more or less correct name, uh, Emmanuel Frimpong, and Francis Coquelin. And that makes eight new signings. And of those eight, only three would, only two are definites, and one is a maybe, and the rest are kind of, they're, they're players that haven't even signed a new contract. But they are players that could, could crack it this coming season. Me personally, I think, I think uh, Coquelin has a chance of cracking it. I don't think Frimpong's going to quite do it this season. I think he's had too many injury problems uh, in the season previous. Uh, the Ox might have a difficult season ahead, I think, because people have wised up to him, and I think it's going to be a lot harder for him to to make the impact he did last season. I think it's going to be two steps forward last season, one step back this season, and then two steps forward the following season. So I don't think we're going to see see great things from the Ox in this forthcoming season but then the season after I think I think he's he's going to be ready for it in a big way uh Rio Miaichi I think he's going to get loaned out again and Jack Wilshire of course if he's recovered from his injuries he could make an impact no question about that well looking at my next uh next subject on my on my little list here uh Linus Volkvist 15 year old centre back Rejected by Sunderland in January. Apparently he's on trial at Arsenal. Is he going to make it? You'd have to say, if he didn't make it at Sunderland, why would we be interested? Not too sure the answer to that. I think unlikely, but you never know. Because with, with young players, they, they do tend to come on at different rates. And, you know, if you if you failed a trial six months ago, then six months later, you could be a world beater. So let's not write him off. So welcome to Arsenal if you make it, Linus. Linus always reminds me of Charlie Brown, that guy who used to play piano, but that's another story. Stephen and Zonzi, meanwhile, available for £10 million. It appears that Blackburn will let him go for that transfer fee. Will we be prepared to pay that kind of money? Well, he is French, so he'd fit in quite well, you'd say. He's been uh, likened to Patrick Vieira. Not sure by who, but um, as well as ourselves, Chelsea apparently interested. Can't see this deal happening if Blackburn hold out and want £10 million. Obviously, they want to bring in some money. They've been bringing in players. Um, Gomez, the Portugal international, signing for them recently. So they've been splashing the cash, Blackburn. I don't see them bouncing back to the Premier League. Uh, so Nzonzi wants out. Like I said, I don't think we're going to do a deal unless the price comes down dramatically. 
yeah, five million pounds, perhaps we'll take a chance on Nzonzi. Um, and uh, well, he's got a lot of height as well. So I, I like to have a few tall players in the team, you know, particularly defensive midfielders. It's always an advantage to have uh, have somebody with that kind of height. He's really tall, a really tall uh, defensive midfielder. So perhaps, perhaps that could happen, like I said, only if Blackburn lower the asking price. Meanwhile, Kwame Ampadu is back at the club, uh, taking care of the under 14 so glad to see that. Um, interestingly, um, I've seen two different uh, websites claim he has, well, one claims he's, he was born in Ghana, the other says Bradford. So, make your own mind up about that. If anyone knows which, uh, which place he was born in, please let me know, because I'm just interested to know, I'm kind of weird like that. Uh, Manuel Almunia, I think I mentioned on my Twitter account, is... Uh, going to be joining Watford it appears uh, Gianfranco Zola the new Watford boss uh, described him as a very good goalkeeper so well you know I think I think they could have done worse they could design Fabianski uh, perhaps that's what we should do we should offer them Fabianski obviously Almunia is a, a free agent so we can't get any money for that but uh, Fabianski uh, let's loan him to Watford and 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 promote Martinez. Damian Martinez certainly should be uh, the number two, I think, based on that pre on that last performance um, against uh, against Sa not Southampton Anderlecht. So then, uh, talking of those kind of uh, pre-season games, we've got uh, we've got a trip to Meadow Park this weekend. I'm still waiting for my ticket to arrive, so I'm getting a bit anxious. Terry Burton, who's now reserves and head development coach, imagine putting all of that on your business card. Well, he reckons the game is going to be special. I hope so, Terry. I hope so. Or I'm going to come looking for you in the dugout. No, I won't because I'm, I, I wouldn't warn you beforehand if I was going to do something like that. And, you know, with the amount of security there's going to be at Boreham Wood, I'm going to behave myself. Trust me. Honestly, I will, Gov. Anyway, um, so finally, uh, I should pose a quiz question before I start reading. So any, anyone that can't stand this Jack and Ori part, please switch off now. But if you if you like to go down memory lane, let's go down memory lane together, eh? Sorry about waving my hand in front of uh, my screen there, but it was almost unavoidable. As I was talking, uh, as I was saying, sorry, earlier about Robin Van Persie um, being likened to Frank Stapleton by Arsblog. I thought that was an interesting parallel, given that uh, Robin Van Persie being linked with a move to Manchester United very heavily. Frank Stapleton made a similar move and of course played in a similar position and and really he was one of my heroes and of course takes me back to the days when uh, when we won the FA Cup uh, in uh, what year was it 79 right against Manchester United and then United liked what they saw and then next thing we knew he was off to Old Trafford so um well, let's let's go. Let's let's just read. Let's just read from this point, page one seven three of uh, Steve Stammer's great book. Another shot of the FA Cup is the subtitle. However, the FA Cup and a possible second successive final were still to come. And although Arsenal needed an extraordinary total of five third round games plus some heroics from Liam Brady to dispose of Jack Cholton's well organised Sheffield Wednesday. Um, we got through, didn't we? A 1-1 draw at Hillsborough brought a replay at Highbury. Brady hit the net for Arsenal, but it finished with the same scoreline as the first game. In a third replay at Leicester, Brady was on the mark again, along with Alan Sunderland, as we were held 2-2. A fourth replay, unimaginable nowadays, um, ended in a 3-3 draw. Before we saw them off with a 2-0 win, goals coming from Stapleton and Steve Gatting, the brother of the former England cricket captain Mike Gatting. Oh, by the way, I didn't set my question, did I? Who did we try to bring in the following season to replace Stapleton, who went to Manchester United? That's the question. Not that difficult, but not that easy, perhaps. And then, uh, then I'll 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 add a further question: Who was the other player brought in as as a replacement for Stapleton, slightly after the first one? Well, it, according to this book, so it's a kind of tricky question. You need to read the book to know the answers. But anyway, let's let's move on. So, the start of 1979 saw a, no, a new arrival in Brian Talbot, who had made a huge impression on Terry Neal and Don Howe the previous May when he'd played for Ipswich at Wembley. Obviously, that was that was uh, an awful memory. I even met uh, the goal scorer, and I told him, he wasn't very happy about it, but I told him he ruined my life um, by scoring that goal. So, uh, that that's my memory of, of Ipswich. It was a shock. It was a shock defeat, wasn't it? in uh, in 1978 that final terrible anyway 
Um, this is Terry Neal and uh, Don Howe liked uh, Talbot's dynamic foraging style and eye for goal. They inquired about him and with Ipswich manager Bobby Robson looking to Holland where he had identified Fran, uh, Franz Tyson and Arnold, Arnold Muren as future transfer targets. And with the impressive youngster John Walk establishing himself in the ranks, an offer of £400,000 was accepted. Brian Talbot and Willie Young scored the goals that saw off Notts County in the fourth round of the FA Cup, but an almighty clash was predicted for the fifth round when we were paired with Nottingham Forest at the city ground. This was to be Stapleton's day. From the raw youngster who was so close to a release from Arsenal, Stapleton had developed into a striker with the ability to hold the ball up and the awareness to bring others into the game, but it was his goal scoring that was to be of value that day. Forrest, managed by the late Brian Clough, were a formidable team. They took the game to Arsenal and were on the front foot for most of the encounter. However, as Clough memorably remarked, it only takes a second to score a goal. And when Stapleton's positional play left Forrest, central defender Larry Lloyd struggling, the Irishman rose to head home a memorable winner. The quarterfinal opponents were Southampton and after a 1-1 draw at the intimidating arena of the Dell, Arsenal won the replay 2-0. As much as a semi-final win can be comfortable, Arsenal eased past Wolves to set up a final with Manchester United. The first half was Arsenal's and they led 2-0 courtesy of strikes from Brian Talbot and Frank Stapleton. United, now managed by former Arsenal coach Dave Sexton, just couldn't get to grips with the game. And if it had been a boxing match, the opinion of many was that it would have been stopped to prevent the infliction of any further punishment. The second half, in searing heat, appeared to be drifting towards an inevitable conclusion until it suddenly took a different turn with a period of drama and contrasting emotions that it seems only football can produce. With only five minutes left, Terry Neal decided to inject some fresh legs into the team to help run down the clock. On came Steve Walford. A bit of a jinx, you might say. To be honest, it was a great feeling, said Walford, in the aftermath of the final. I had come on just to add some presence, but it seemed that before I had touched the ball, United were level. It was weird. United's comeback started when central defender Gordon McQueen swept the ball home, but worse was to come, as within two minutes, Samuel McElroy set off on a mazy run that took him inside the area and he prodded the, prodded the ball past his Northern Ireland teammate Pat Jennings. An anonymous final had suddenly been ignited and it wasn't over yet, much to the relief of Arsenal and Walford in particular. He, he said, I came on expecting to see out time and pick up a winner's medal, he said. Then suddenly it's 2-2. Not for long though, as Liam Brady, keeping his head amid the bedlam, secured possession in midfield and spotted Graham Ricks running down the left wing. With a superb measured pass, Graham Ricks was able to run clear and cross deep to the far post beyond United goalkeeper Gary Bailey where Alan Sunderland was waiting to rifle home the winner and set off the victory run that is shown time and time again on television replays. Arsenal had won the 1979 FA Cup by three goals to two. So, that was Frank Stapleton at possibly his peak. And I really thought we're going to win, we're going to win trophy after trophy with this team. I mean, we had Graham Ricks, we had Liam Brady, more importantly, and even Brian Talbot. That was a, a great signing, in my opinion. But then... That team started to break up and uh, Frank Stapleton obviously um, was one of the key players that we let go and I was very upset about it and and as you can see from this story sometimes it's not that easy to replace these players these top players that leave. In the summer of 1981 Stapleton left Arsenal to join Manchester United and with him went much of the goal potency Take note, Arsenal directors. In 1981-1982, Arsenal scored only a meagre 48 goals without him. And although they finished fifth, they did not seem to be a team that was progressing. The FA Cup draw was again unkind as the third round took Arsenal to Tottenham, who won 1-0, and Liverpool ended the League Cup charge in December with a resounding 3-0 replay win at Anfield. And now here's the answer to my question that I posed earlier. In the close season of 1982, so look at that, we waited a whole year to try to replace Stapleton. In a bid to solve the goal-scoring problem, Terry Neal signed striker Lee Chapman from Stoke City and Tony Walcock, uh, Woodcock even. <laughs> that was like a cross between Woodcock and Walcock. And he was signed from FC Cologne. And, and Stammers also adds, one transfer worked, the other didn't. Woodcock proved himself to be an asset to the club. So, he also adds, Terry Neal had clinched the deal after four or five months of hard work behind the scenes, but his patience paid off. And I'm not going to do a Northern Irish accent because I don't think I can manage that. 
but he's a marvellous player. That's sort of like a generic Irish one, I suppose, said Terry Neal. Chapman was not so much of a success, but maybe it was a move that was destined not to work out. His first game against the club he had left, Stoke, Arsenal lost 2-1. Chapman was subjected to incessant derision from the crowd. His home debut was a 1-1 draw with Norwich, and how different Chapman's Arsenal career might have been if a goal that looked perfectly legitimate had not been disallowed for offside, um, we'll never know. He was brave, big and fearless, but he lacked real guile and would never be accused of being elegant. So perhaps I'm uh, I'm completely wrong then to try to try to get the club to sign uh, Andy Carroll because he sounds um, to some people in some people's opinion anyway he's a little bit similar to uh, Lee Chapman, lacking guile you might say. But um, but I think to be honest I really think Andy Carroll's technical ability is better than Lee Chapman. Although I must confess I I, I don't remember seeing Lee Chapman's games that much, but I don't remember being overly impressed. Obviously. Everyone was impressed with uh, with uh, Woodcock. And um, he's almost an Arsenal legend, of course, uh, Tony Woodcock. And um, he was he was on Arsenal TV when it was still going on Sky. Whatever happened to that? Why do we have to get it on Arsenal Player now? We've got Chelsea TV. We've got Manchester United TV, Liverpool TV, I think, still going. What about Arsenal TV? Can't we have it back on Sky? Can't we have it on TV as opposed to on the internet? I don't know. Perhaps a club are more forward-thinking. Um you know, now that now that we've changed the cannon to point in the opposite direction, that's uh, that's a good move, right? Anyway, a good move for me right now would be to say goodbye and uh, hope you enjoyed it. If not, um, don't tell me about it because I would like to be in ignorance. Ignorance is bliss, they say. And if you did like it, let me know. Or if there's any particular features that you want uh, that I've not done, just let me know about that too. And that's all for now. Until the next time, up the Gooners!